Hi friends, it's Gwen. Today I'm going to do my January wrap up and a TBR for February. I have never done a TBR for February or a monthly TBR before, but this month I definitely need to do one because I have a couple of books lined up for various reasons and I will share that at the end of this video. Now my wrap up for January is going to be rather short except for the very last book just because I have filmed reviews for all of the books that I have read in January. So go me on my resolution of filming more reviews. The first book that I read this year I actually got at a store called The Book Exchange. Well, actually the first two books that I read came from The Book Exchange. And what the store is, is they have used books there that people are done reading. So you bring in your old books that you don't want anymore and they give you store credit. And then with that store credit, you can basically get free books or, you know, pay the difference type thing. Um, a the first two books that I picked up was American Born Chinese, the graphic novel, and I read that and I left it unrated just because I hadn't really read a lot of graphic novels up until that point and I didn't feel that it was fair to rate it. The artwork was really good, I enjoyed that part of it. The story was a little weird, but parts of it were really good. The second book that I got there was The Hunger Pains, um, the parody by the Harvard Lampoon. I have also um, returned that to the store as well. I left that unrated because I'm not used to reading parodies and while it was funny, I mean, it was really pretty terrible. But I have reviews of all of these books already on my channel, so if you're interested in a little bit more detail, then you can find those on my channel. The next book that I read was an ARC that I received from the author and that was Clover Donovan's Wicked and I got that as an ARC ebook form. I read it, I rated it two stars for the ARC form just because the balance of description was not there. I'm sure that the finished product is a lot better. I still do want to get a copy of it from Amazon. It's on paperback and Kindle and I have a review of that on my channel as well if you're interested in more details. The next book that I read, yes, the next book that I read was Pledged, The Secret Life of Sororities by Alexandra Robbins. I rated this three stars. It didn't really show a good balance of sorority life. It was a little outdated information and it was one-sided. So it kind of seemed a little bit biased to me. Um, it felt like she was going in finding why do women hate sororities and stay and the women that she followed, a eh, little iffy. But I actually lost a subscriber over that review, so I'm not sure if it was offensive or not. I mean, I certainly hope not, but I'm in a sorority and I said that in the video and I talked a little bit about my sorority's policies according, you know, based off of what the book was talking about, like our hazing policy and the disciplinary action. But I have a full review of this on my channel if you're interested in checking that out. It is quite lengthy, but I think it's worth it if you're in a sorority or looking into books like this. The next book that I chose was actually out of my um, TBR jar, which I have right here set aside. Um, but I picked the book to movie adaptation. For that, I picked Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This book was super crazy. It was my first Gillian Flynn book. I definitely want to read more from her because I like her writing style and her characters. And I actually watched the movie as well just a couple of days ago. So I don't know if that's why it's actually sticking with me because I'm kind of perpetually like either reading it or watching the movie. But it was totally excellent. I have a re book talk about this on my channel because there are spoilers in there because you really can't go into too much depth about this book unless you talk about the spoilers so so it's a book talk it does contain spoilers but it's on my channel if you're interested the movie adaptation that they did for that I thought that they did an excellent job staying along the plot line they handled the point of views um, very well and I would recommend it if you haven't read the book I would read the book or you know you could probably just see the movie but because it was it was like that close there were some small details but it didn't like ruin the book so that's a good movie to check out if you haven't. The next book that I read was a gift from Danny at Danny Darling. She sent it to me for Christmas, and that is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book I also rated five out of five stars. Well, yeah, this, oh, sorry, I didn't even say that. I rated this five out of five stars. Oops. <laughs> um, I also rated this five out of five stars. Um, I'm not sure if it's really a four or a five. I went through, I initially rated it a four, but then I went back and changed it to a five. Um, just because I went through the characters and I thought, I don't know, I just, 
at the end it's either a four or a five so it's a really good book it's rather short it's a good summertime story or anytime story I have a full review of this on my channel somewhere the next two books I actually picked up at my campus library and that was Living Dead Girl by Elizabeth Scott and Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin I don't know how to say his last name sorry but um, both of these books got five stars from me as well and I feel like I was just tossing out the five stars like but I wasn't I mean these books were really good Living Death Girl by Elizabeth Scott was very haunting that is another book that is sticking with me and it was scary and I actually had to put it down a couple times but then I was shocked when I went back and saw how long it took me to read it and I read it within a day and that is crazy because whew, I could have probably spent a week just to read a chapter ooh, because it is very scary and it deals with some very disturbing things like kidnapping and a pedophile and ooh, scary stuff. Um, Aristotle and Dante, I really didn't know that much about that book because I didn't really read a synopsis or anything and then I just saw it in the library and I picked it up and I was like, I remember seeing that cover somewhere so yeah, I'm just going to get it because um, I figured if I didn't like it, I could always just return it like no big deal, but I loved it. It was another five star read. Um, I have the review on my channel so make sure you check that out. The next book that I read... The Wicked Girls by Alex Marwood was terrible. Don't bother picking it up. Ugh, this book was terrible. It had very, very, very small um, pieces that were good or interesting, but overall, terrible book. Would not recommend. Um, one star. One star. But there is a review on my channel. Oh, sorry. There will be a review of this and the next book coming out this Friday, so stay tuned for that. The next book that I read, as soon as I finished Wicked Girls, I had to pick up something that I knew I was going to love and people have been raving about this book and I have been searching for this book and I finally just ordered it and it shipped and it was actually, my package actually shipped in like two different pieces and this was the first one I received, so I read. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness and these awards 100% it deserves. It was beautiful and graphic and it was just lovely. Um, the story was great, the illustrations were great. There are illustrations, I didn't really know that before. Um, but yeah, this book was excellent. Five stars. The review comes out with The Wicked. I did a rapid review and it comes out this Friday, February 6th. The next book that I read was my January pick for my uppercase subscription and that was The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This was one of my highly anticipated reads of the year. I rated this three stars. I was slightly disappointed while it had some great magical elements. Some of them were just so silly and yes it is a YA but I was just expecting a little bit more. I have a full review of this on my channel. Check it out. After that, I read that actually that was on the 31st. I finished that on the 31st and then I still had a few hours left. I could still squeeze in a book, right? At least a graphic novel. So that's exactly what I did. My second box came in and in that box order I got Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes and I also got Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This was amazing. I was trying not to follow the hype, and this is the book I'll talk a little bit more about because I do not have a review on my channel yet or scheduled. Um, I have heard so much hype about this. People were saying, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, just get it, just get it. And like I said before about American Moral Chinese, I hadn't really read a lot of graphic novel so I wasn't really sure if I wanted to get it or if I would like it so I just picked up the first volume and I loved it and I'm obsessed and I need volumes two three and four ASAP if you do not know Saga is the sweeping tale of one young family fighting to find their place in the universe when two soldiers from opposite sides of a never-ending galactic war fall in love they risk every Thing to bring a fragile new life into a dangerous old world. Fantasy and science fiction are wed like never before in the first volume of this sexy, subversive, ongoing epic. It is amazing. It is for mature audiences only in my opinion, but in this short little graphic novel, between the amazing illustrations and the beautiful story, 
the characters are developed they there is a character arc as well as a story arc and the plot is interesting the world is very well built um my favorite character is isabel i just i love this the artwork is amazing i can't say enough about this i really 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 want to pick up volumes two three and four if you haven't read this or if you're new to graphic novels and you're mature your audiences only um, I highly recommend this there's many plots that all kind of flow together into one bigger picture it's very unique very fun fantasy sci-fi you will love this one thing that I really liked about it is I actually saw my name and I was like what so please say that it says who the fuck is Gwendolyn? I'm right here. It's me. Just kidding. But, um, yeah, I just loved this. I'll give you a quick flip flip. Oh, it's so beautiful, you guys. If you haven't read this or you haven't got it, like, keep your eye out for it. I know if you're looking for it in stores, you may have a hard time finding this. I even went to a comic book store that I found, and they were out, but they were ordering more. So I hope to get two, three, and four soon, and maybe I'll do a full review once I read all four volumes. Maybe that will be a good way to do it. But yeah, this was really great, you guys. I can't even stop looking at it. So pretty. But that wraps up my January reading month. Last year, January 2014, I only read three books. I read Unwanted, Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins, and The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And this month, as you saw, I read 12 books. So it was an amazing reading month. I think I'm going to go ahead and do my TBR in a separate video so this isn't too long. And anyway, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's a little crummy outside here, but I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Hey, did you hit the subscribe button? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Like this video.